Go ahead. So, okay. So this is the first question. All right. Okay. And this is from our patrons. So the first one is, is the Bible compatible with evolution? Meaning common ancestry is true, but the process was guided. Well, it depends on what you mean by that. If you mean biblical inerrancy, it doesn't appear to be compatible because you've got God creating Adam out of the dust, not out of pre-existing animal forms. So I would say no. But even if macroevolution were true, and I don't think it is, but even if it were true, that wouldn't mean Christianity was false. It would give us problems for biblical inerrancy in the Old Testament, but it wouldn't mean Christianity was false. God could still exist and Christianity could still be true because Jesus came and died and rose from the dead. So it's a secondary issue in my view, evolution. It's an interesting issue, but it's a secondary issue. It's not an essential of the faith one way or the okay. other. Okay. So why do you say that we'd have to reject is that what you're saying? We'd have to reject biblical inerrancy in well, order to Well, yeah, adopt? if we're going to say, or unless we're just going to allegorize the whole thing and, and say okay. when, when Genesis says that God created Adam out of the dust, that uh -huh. was just a metaphor of some kind for mm -hmm. uh, God created. Well, so what if someone said that that's the correct interpretation? So, right, there's different interpretations of Scripture. Mm -hmm. So maybe they just say that the correct interpretation sort of leaves it a, an open question of how God brought about life. So well, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't reject inerrancy or even inspiration. It would just be, this is a different interpretation of this biblical passage. Right, I think you can do that with some passages. That one seems pretty, pretty clear to me, though, Which one? That God creates Adam out of the dust. He doesn't create him out of pre-existing life forms. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he seems to directly, divinely create Adam out of the dust. So mm -hmm. uh, all the other animals are created, and then you get man. So yeah. well, some, it would some seem people... to be an odd interpretation to, to say that we could fit evolution in there. Yeah. Some theologians think that you could have like a separate event of God creating man specifically, but then everyone else or all the other life forms sort of going through the evolutionary process. And so God sort of specially creates man somewhere down the line. And yeah. I hadn't heard that before. I'd have to see what kind of argumentation they give for that. Yeah. But it seems to be he's creating the life forms individually through the days. And mm -hmm. then you get to man in day six and he creates them. But let me just say this that even if macroevolution were 100% true, the laws that drive it still need a mind behind them. No, because, that I agree with. Yeah, because the world is not random. The world has order to it and structure. That's how we can yeah. do science, by yeah. the way, as cause and effect, reliable cause and effect, very fine-tuned natural laws. So even if you were to say that somehow these life forms could come into existence through some sort of natural process, the natural process itself is guided by a mind because the natural forces that when we combine, we call them natural laws, require a mind. They're consistent, they're precise, they're very fine-tuned. They require a mind to even exist. So you don't get away from uh, some kind of intelligence yeah. by saying macroevolution is true. Hello, Cameron here. Thanks for watching this little clip. If you want more, there's actually a whole interview this clip came from. Just uh, click the link on the screen. Oh, and by the way, we post two to three new videos a week. So if you're interested in apologetics at all, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can catch our latest content. Uh, oh, and then lastly, remember that Christianity is true.